Faith Hedgepeth was supposed to be the first person in her family to ever graduate from college. But that dream was tragically cut short on September 7th, 2012. Faith Hedgepeth was brutally murdered in the bedroom of her apartment, and nearly a decade on, police have made a big announcement. You can skip ahead to the timestamp where we talk about the update, but stick around if you want to hear a bit of the backstory about the case, some more context, and what has led to this point. 19-year-old Faith Hedgepeth was a UNC Chapel Hill sophomore. On the night of September 6, 2012, Faith spent several hours at the library and then a bar called The Thrill, a once popular venue with students that has since gone out of business. She went with her roommate Karina Rosario, known to many as Rosie. After a while dancing, Karina said she felt sick and the pair were seen on CCTV leaving the club just after 2am. They drove back to their off-campus apartment together in Faith's car. Faith and Karina both lived at Hawthorne at The View and shared a second-floor apartment. The complex is surrounded by trees and has only one way in and one way out. By 3am, the pair were back at their apartment. A neighbour who was up late watching TV said she heard noises coming from the apartment which belonged to the girls. She said she'd heard thumping noises which sounded like a very heavy book bag being dropped or an end table being turned over. Around this time, records show that Faith's Facebook was accessed. At 3.40am a text was sent from Faith's phone to a man named Brandon Edwards. Ty Michael McNeil, Faith's college boyfriend, also received a text at 3.52am. Karina left the apartment at 4.27am, getting picked up by a friend named Jordan and leaving the apartment door unlocked. She said Faith was asleep in bed at the time. Karina stayed at her friend's apartment for the remainder of the morning, before calling Faith for a lift home at about 10.30am. Faith never answered the phone. Karina then phoned another friend named Marisol. Marisol picked Karina up and they both drove back to Karina and Faith's apartment, getting there for approximately 11am. Faith's body was discovered near her bed and the crime scene was brutal. An autopsy revealed she had died from severe blows and blunt force trauma to her head. Faith was positioned on the floor leaning against the bed, with her shirt pulled up over her face, and she had no clothes on from the waist down. She was also partly covered with a blanket. Investigators found semen on Faith's body, which matched male DNA found elsewhere in the apartment. Police said at the time it was more likely than not that Faith had been raped. Next to Faith's body was a handwritten note that read, I'm not stupid, bitch, jealous, and it was written on the back of a takeout bag. Karina phoned 911 and police arrived at the apartment. Hi, um, I just walked into my apartment and my friend was just like, you're unconscious. Okay, what's your address, ma'am? I live at Hawkeye at the view. You say your friend is unconscious? He's unconscious. I just walked in the apartment and there looks like there's blood okay, everywhere. Listen to, okay, <laughs> listen to me. Okay, how how old is your how old is she? She's nineteen. Listen to me. Is is she breathing? I don't know. You need to check and see. Is she breathing? I don't think so. Okay, listen to me. There's blood everywhere. She's on the back that like she. I think she fell off the bed because she's, like, off the bed. There's blood all over the pillows, like, in the comforter. I just don't know what happened. Many people were questioned and considered persons of interest, including Karina, Karina's ex-boyfriend, Eric Takoy Jones, and Faith's college boyfriend, Ty Michael McNeil. DNA samples were compared, but no one came back as a match to the crime scene. No witnesses apart from the neighbour that heard thumping sounds came forward 
and said they had seen anything or anyone in or around the apartment at that time. And sadly, there was no CCTV. The DNA from 52 pieces of evidence, including the murder weapon, thought to be a Bacardi rum bottle, were cross-referenced with hundreds of different DNA samples to rule out suspects. In 2016, from the DNA found at the scene, a composite sketch was put together. Using genetic coding from the DNA, which acted like a blueprint, experts released this image of who they believed could possibly be the killer. They said it didn't rule anyone else out as being potentially involved, but the DNA indicated that the suspect is very strongly of Native American and European mixed ancestry, or Latino. Several more years would pass, with no leads on Faith's case. This takes us to September 16th, 2021. A decade, Chapel Hill police move forward in their efforts to get justice for Faith Hedgepeth. It was a cold Thanks case for nearly a decade. The murder of Faith Hedgepeth remained unsolved until today. Her extraordinary and amazing life cut short by an act of violence. Yeah, this new development is such a happy and sad moment for so many people who have been following this case from the beginning, including investigators. Following a drunk driving charge in Wake County several weeks prior, 28-year-old Miguel Enrique Salguero Oliveras was arrested. He has a Chapel Hill address listed and was also charged with no operator's license, no liability insurance, an open container alcohol violation and a registration violation, according to court records. He failed to appear in court on September 3rd and an outstanding order for his arrest was issued on September 7th, the court documents also showed. Police have since announced that his DNA was a match to the crime scene at Faith's apartment and he has now been charged with first-degree murder in the case of Faith Daniel Hedgepeth. He would have been 19 at the time of the alleged offence, and he was not initially a suspect or person of interest at the beginning of the investigation. A sample provided by law enforcement of the suspect, the state crime lab generated a match to a DNA profile created or derived from the original crime scene. As a result, an arrest nearly a decade in the making has been made. Today is an important day as we announce that we have arrested Miguel Enrique Salguero of Olivares, age 28, of Durham. The arrest was made this morning without incident with the assistant of the State Bureau of Investigations. He's been charged with first-degree murder of Faith Danielle Hedgepath on September 17, 2012. He is currently in the Durham County Jail under no bond. We have fielded many interviews from the media in the past nine years about this case. And in each of those interviews, I have said that there is not a day that goes by that I don't think about Faith and how to help bring justice to Faith and her family. I wish I could have met her under much different circumstances. I've learned so much about Faith, her bright, infectious personality, the reasons why she had so many friends and knew so many people around Chapel Hill. Her legacy lives on through all the lives that she touched. Roland, Connie, Rolanda, and family, I now carry a piece of faith with me. Please know that while she's gone, she's not forgotten. As Chief Blue alluded to, this investigation is not complete. Our work is not done. We will continue to work this case until every lead has been extinguished and any parties that have, have a role in or knowledge of this tragedy are brought to justice. There have been few details given about the accused and how or if he had known Faith. Elaborate more on the relationship between the suspect and Faith. More will be made available at this case as time goes on and authorities have yet to comment on whether he will also be charged with a sex crime too. He is currently being held without bond at the Durham County Jail. CR54671, it is alleged that the defendant, Miguel Enrique Salguera Oliveres, did unlawfully, willfully, and feloniously, with malice aforethought, kill and murder Faith Hedgepeth on the date 
Now, this offense is September 7, 2012. Now, he has no previous conviction. He has a, uh, I'm sorry, he has one previous conviction for DWI, uh, no violent conviction. He has pending traffic charges in West The defendant shall be held on no bond. Thank, thank you all. Have a good day, sir. Thank you, Well, thank God for this day that we allowed me to stay alive and to see this day. I'm Faith's mother, Connie Hutchbeth. And when I got the news this morning, I didn't do anything but cry and thank God and praise God because I put it in his hands and it was his timing. I don't know why it took so long, but I just know that it was him. And I just thank the Chapel Hill Police Department, the SBI, anyone that had a hand and happened to investigate this case. I just thank them for all their hard work and their labor paid off. And just when I cried, it was tears of joy, tears of relief, knowing that someone had been arrested in her case. The case is still very much active and ongoing, but we always try to give the most recent information and we thought it was important we share this update, as Faith's case is one we've talked about and have been following for a while.